He is a legend in his own time. Very few of us in our own time get a statue built of us in the heart of a city. He is the personification of America's unique sport. More than that, though, you might say that's yesterday. No, it's today. Because of this background, he's still a generous volunteer, using his life and talents to help many others. Facts of his life can be recited by all baseball fans and now recorded on that hottest of all trading items, baseball cards. Stan Musial was born in Donora, Pennsylvania, south of Pittsburgh, the fifth of six children of poor immigrants who met while both were working at the local wire mill. Stan's mother often baked ten loaves of bread at a time, and it usually was gone in two days. Stan says he remembers also how he and his brother used to haul coal up from a 15-foot pit in their backyard using a bucket and a rope. But he doesn't ever recall being without a baseball and he credits a neighbor who managed the nearby Zinc Works baseball team with igniting his interest in the sport. Beginning in his teens as a Class D pitcher for $65 a month, Stan hit the major leagues by the time he was 20. In the 22 seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals that followed, he won seven National League batting championships, finishing his career in 1963 with a batting average of .331. Stan Musial, slugging card outfielder, is the next hitter. Here's the pitch, and wham! There she goes over the roof of the right field pavilion. It's a home run. Stan the Man was inducted into baseball's exclusive Hall of Fame in 1969. A statue of him stands at the entrance to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. After retiring, Stan served several years as head of the U.S. Council on Physical Fitness. He must practice what he preaches as he says his weight hasn't varied more than five pounds since then. Business took up much of his time for a while. There was a Stan Musial and Biggie's restaurant in St. Louis, a bowling alley, and three hotels. Today, besides playing an active role on the Cardinals advisory board, Stan devotes much of his time to local and national charities, including the St. Louis Crippled Children Association. He also travels frequently to Poland, his father's native country, where he's helping to establish Little League Baseball. In return, a Little League field in the city of Roklaw has been named in his honor. If he had to do it over again, Stan says he would have gone to college on the scholarship that he was offered. Although, he has to admit, his life certainly worked out well for him. But his message to young people today is to get a good education. For his excellence in performance and integrity in the baseball arena, as well as his volunteerism and leadership, we are proud to welcome into the Horatio Alger Association of Distinguished Americans, Stan Musial. Presenting the award to Mr. Musial are Horatio Alger Association members Frank Resnick and Michelum Rickless. I wish I had a bat in my hand instead of this mic. <laughs> Recently, I was talking to a group such as this. I was having trouble with the mic. And I said, you know, the mic must be on the bum. And a fellow in the back said, no, the bum is on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to congratulate all the scholarship award winners and to the Horatio Alger awardees. Everything begins with a dream or an idea. My dream was always to be a big league baseball player. While playing in high school in Denor, Pennsylvania, a St. Louis scout came to our house three different times 
to sign a contract. My dad, who came from Poland, refused to sign that contract because he heard I had an opportunity to go to the University of Pittsburgh on a basketball scholarship. He knew the value of a college education and a scholarship. I counseled with my li librarian teacher, a Miss Helen Close, and she advised me to take the cardinal offer. <laughs> <laughs> My mother convinced my dad to sign the contract by telling him this, that one of the reasons why he came to America is for the opportunity of freedom and choice. My mother and my Miss Close, they made my dream come true. Now in today's world, a college education is a must and a degree is very important. I tell these young folks to have their dreams, have goals, set their sights high, and they'll be successful. But success always carries a responsibility. And I want, I want to quote President Bush who recently said, from now on in America, any definition of a successful life must include serving others. If our young scholars will keep that in mind, we Americans will be always proud of them. Thank you very much.